Escitalopram, or trade name Lexapro, is an SSRI therapeutic class antidepressant. The way that this works, you know, like we just said, it's SSRI. That means selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Okay, so what really happens here is in our neurological system, we have neurons, we have axons, and between our neurons, we have things called neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters play a role in our neurological processes. They play a role in our mood. They play a role in, in muscular movement and everything. And what we have here is we have little neurotransmitters that travel between one axon and another axon throughout our nervous system. And there's a little space between axons called a synapse. And what will happen is the neurotransmitter will travel from one, go between the little synapse, go into the other one, and continue to flow throughout the system. Serotonin is one of our neurotransmitters that plays a role in mood and behavior. Okay, so it's a really important neurotransmitter to that affects our mood. So what, what these SSRIs do, so between these synapses, we actually have things that will pull these neurotransmitters back into the system and, and, and get them, you know, back into the neurons. But what these SSRIs do is they actually prevent the serotonin from going back into the previous axon and leave that more of it in the synapse available. And so by doing this, we increase the amount of serotonin available. So all we're really doing is preventing it from being taken back. And by thereby, we increase the amount available. So because of this, it really plays a role in major depressive disorder, anxiety disorder, PTSD, and social phobia. Some of the nursing considerations to keep in mind are that it's contraindicated with MAOI use. We really want to leave about two weeks between stopping an MAOI and starting Lexapro. It can also unfortunately lead to suicidal thoughts, insomnia, drowsiness. So it's really important to monitor your patients who are taking antidepressants because these antidepressants can actually lead to suicidal ideation. So we really want to very directly ask our patients, have you had any thoughts of harming yourself? And we really want to make sure we're being very direct with that question. We don't want to beat around the bush with this question. We need to get a direct question and a direct answer about if our patient is having suicidal thoughts. Another severe side effect that these can cause is that they can lead to QT prolongation. What this means is it can actually lead to very severe ventricular arrhythmias. And so we really want to monitor the patient, monitor their EKG and see if there's been any EKG changes, if the QT interval is is being elongated and how long it's getting. It's really important to let your patient know too that it can take four to six weeks for this medication to actually take effect. So you really want to let your patient know, you know, you're not going to notice right away a complete change in your mood or your depression kind of subsiding a little bit, but it's going to take a month, maybe more for this to actually even start working. So you really want to assess your patient's mood, assess their previous thoughts, assess their suicidal ideation, and really help your patient understand how this medication works and what they can kind of expect from the medication. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at nrsng.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.